Welcome. This is 49J1 and we're going to talk about resistors in series and parallel network combinations. Um, so there's three basic components we spend a lot of time talking about. Capacitors, which we've mentioned before, and then resistors, which we're mentioning now, and then we have inductors. And if we think about circuits as being networks that enable us to get the correct potential difference across the correct component at the correct time, then um, they're more easily analyzed that way. And so sometimes we'll put components um, in series, one following on from the other, for, for various reasons. Maybe the EMF is 12 volts and my light bulb can only stand 4 volts. So then I need a resistor which will stand 8 volts to protect it. Um, various, there's various uh, reasons why we have uh, uh, the shape of the, of the circuits that we have. Um, but we need to analyze them. We need to be able to figure out what's going on. And so one of the basic skills, as I think we mentioned with capacitors, is can we recognize when components are in series and can we recognize when they are in parallel? And what I do is I imagine a finger, moving my finger around and if my point of interest goes through one component and then inevitably through the next component then that is a series combination and if as I move my point of interest around I get to a junction I get to a, a junction and at that junction I have a decision to make about do I take my point of interest through one branch or through another branch then that's parallel so with a bit of practice you can spot them very easily it's just a case of um, realizing that it's important to to spot them so we try to identify series and parallel combination bits just like we did with uh, capacitors and what we say is well for a series combination uh, the same current flows through all the resistors in a series combination it's got it's like traffic traveling past one lamppost and then past another lamppost. It's, it's, it's not created, it's not destroyed between lampposts. All the cars that pass one lamppost pass the next lamppost. All the current going through R1 will go through R2. But the potential difference across each resistor, it adds up to the, uh, um, well, how can I put this? So. The, res the, the uh, potential difference across this resistor plus the potential difference across that resistor need not be the same as each other, but together they will equal the EMF caused by that battery. So the currents are the same, but the potential differences need not be the same. And my conceptual visualization is that I have a water pump and then big fat pipes with no pressure drop and then in between the big fat pipes I have these little straws and these little straws cause all the pressure drop so the pressure created in the water pump is dropped across the resistors, these little straws of the resistors. Um, and so the EMF measured in volts created in the power supply is dropped as potential difference across these components. Two resistors end to end is like blowing through two straws, one after the other. And so the resistance gets bigger and I can say, well, the, and I want to change this actually. I want to call this not equivalent. I'm going to call it R series. So I remember it's the series equation. R series equals R1 plus R2. Now, 
you may recall that C parallel equaled C1 plus C2. Hmm. So the equation form that I use for parallel capacitors I'm using for series resistors. And in both cases you can justify it by saying will the capacitance get bigger or smaller? If it gets bigger use this equation. If Will the resistance get bigger or smaller? If it gets bigger use that equation. If I look at a parallel combination, so there's a there's a junction and then there's there's at least two, maybe more resistors side by side. We say the potential difference across each resistor in a parallel network is the same. Ooh, it was current that was the same last time. Whoa, that didn't work. It was current that was the same last time. Let's get rid of that. It was current that was the same last time. And now it's potential difference that's the same. So hmm, they're contrasting here. And now the current flow through each resistor in a parallel network adds up so that the current flowing here equals the current flowing there plus the current flowing there. So the current through R1 need not be the same as the current flowing through R2, but the combination will add up in this case to the current flowing out of the out of the battery. And again you can think about it as been a water pump and big fat pipes and then these little straws. You know, you can you can visualize it. And what we find is that for a and again I want to put this down as a not R equivalent, but R parallel. 1 over R parallel equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And we can say, oh, that's interesting because parallel capacitors equaled, uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> 1 over a C series equaled 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. <laughs> so the equation you use for series in for capacitors we use for parallel resistors and the equation we use for parallel capacitors we're going to use for series resistors. That, that form. So ideally, I think it's best you learn one of them really well and then you do the opposite when you get the alternative. So you learn the equations really well for capacitors and then you say, oh, when I'm doing resistors, I'll do the opposite. And or you'd learn it for resistors and when you're doing uh, capacitors, you do the opposite. Let's get on and do some questions here. Uh, an 8 ohm resistor is connected in series with a 4 ohm resistor. So this is the American symbol for resistors. This is 8 ohm and this is 4 ohm. And they're in series so you come out of one and you go into the other. And then what is the equivalent resistance? So, And you've got to recognize that these are in series. So this is our series. And we say our series is equal to our... 1 plus R2 so our series is equal to 8 plus 4 so our series is equal to 12 ohms it got bigger and the answer is bigger than the biggest of the resistors in series is is bigger and then we have another example an 8 ohm resistor is connected in parallel so Eight ohm is connected in parallel with a four ohm, and now we say, well, one over r parallel is equal to one over r one plus one over r two. So one over r parallel is equal to one over eight plus one over four, which equals, well, one over eight plus. 2 over 8 so 1 over R parallel 
is equal to 3 over 8 r. So r parallel is equal to 8 over 3 r parallel is equal to 2.67 ohms. And a small but significant part of the class will give me the answer of 3 over 8 ohms. And I believe that's usually because they're not writing complete sentences or equations. They're just doing math in their head and little numbers jotted down on the page. And so they do that math and they get 3 over 8, but they forget that it's 1 over R parallel that equals 3 over 8, not R parallel. So watch out for that. Just, just be a bit careful. Um, and then we have another example. This is, this is a... a slightly more challenging example um, on this one what we have is we have a combination of resistors and there's a there's a skill basically and it's, it's like where do you begin do you do a series bit first or a parallel bit first and as I look at this I see I've got to do this parallel bit first and then I'll revisit and do the series bit and the best way I can describe it to you is that these two resistors are undoubtedly, unambiguously in parallel with each other. But is it the three that's in series with a two or is the three in series with the eight? That's not unambiguous. So do the unambiguous bit first. So I'm going to turn around. Now this is, the diagram is the international symbol for the resistor. And... I'm using the American symbol for the resistor. This is 3 ohms, this is 8 ohms, and this is 2 ohms. And if I want to find the combination, I need to do the parallel bit first. So I go 1 over R parallel is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. The more times I write it down, the more it goes into my long-term memory. 1 over 8 plus 1 over 2 which equals 1 over 8 plus 4 over 8, which equals 5 over 8. So our parallel is equal to 8 over 5, which equals 1.6 ohms. So then let's redraw our diagram now. So this is 3 ohms and this is 1.6 ohms. And I want to bring it down to the one single equivalent resistor. So I go, well, that is in series. So R series is equal to R1 plus R2, which equals 3 plus 1.6, which equals 4.6 ohms. 4.6 ohms. Uh, a couple of things just before we leave. Number one... Um, although we tend to draw resistors like this, um, pretty well all devices have some resistance. So the two ohm resistor could be a light bulb or it could be a uh, audio speaker or it could be a, a heating element. So don't think that this is only for the little resistors that you buy in the packages. Um, and then the, uh, the other thing I'd say is sometimes we also use resistors because we, we can't find the value that we want in the standard values. So we use parallel and series combinations to get the exact value that we want. And there we have it.